I don't want to be in the way of these slides, but I want to make sure that all of you can see me. And um, boy, this has been an amazing event so far. In fact, everything that's already been talked about, I feel like my story's already been told in a way. Um, but I want to make sure so that you're going to stay awake, right? So wake up, <laughs> even though it's post-lunch. Okay, so um, who am I? Well, I am one of over 32,766 registered psychologists, which is about an equivalent number to how many GPs there are in Australia. And I have a Doctor of psychologist. I gradu Psychology. I graduated from Murdoch University in 2000. And um, I have, I'm now a clinical psychologist and registered since 1999. And I'm, I work in full-time private practice in Perth, mainly treating clients with anxiety and depression. But I'm also an expert in workplace bullying. So I spend a lot of my time reading, researching and writing about workplace bullying and helping clients in that area. Um, now, the interesting thing is I've never had a complaint from any client ever, even though I've been working as a psychologist now for pretty much 17 years. Um, so this, I would say, uh, describes who I am. So um, describes my personality. You can have a, a little look at that. Uh, now, APRA. I also am registered with APRA, but I'm an allied health practitioner as opposed to a medical practitioner. And the fear mongering really starts from the top. Uh, we get sent in our email boxes threats from the um, chair of the psychologist board on a regular basis. And uh, he believes that psychologists are dangerous because, you're going to love this, Scientology was closed down in the 1960s and patients died as a result of the psychiatric deep sleep therapy in the 1970s. Does that make any sense to anybody? No. It didn't make sense to me either. This, is, this link here is a link to the article that accompanies my presentation today. I've written it out because I was so scared that I wouldn't get through the short time span that we have. Um, and I'll show it to you again at the end. You can read this public statement. It's, it's in the public domain, the thing that he wrote. Uh, so psychologists are dangerous. Ah! See, a dangerous, a dangerous psychologist is in front of you right this minute. Are you, any of you scared? <laughs> you should be. <laughs> right. Now, the ironically named Connections newsletter comes in our inbox once every couple of months or so. And there is a threat in every newsletter. For example, and I've fleshed these out in my article so you can read more about them. We have had threats of deregistration. Threats of fines ranging between $5,000 and $30,000. In fact, one of the biggest fines you can get is by using the name, you're calling yourself a specialist, you get fined $30,000. Never made any sense to me, but anyway. You get threats for misconduct. Uh, if you don't write your notes in a certain way, you get threats for being humiliated by your peers and constant fee badgering. I mean, the, the um, registration fee is due 30th of November. They start sending out the reminders mid-September and they just keep coming. And with each one comes a threat. Now, this bullying attitude, because I, I research a lot in the area, I'm very aware of it and I'm very sensitive to it. So whenever these emails come into my inbox, I, I feel really uncomfortable because to me it speaks of a uh, bullying attitude and it breeds fear and lack of trust. So the background of my story that I'm going to tell you is already I'm feeling a lack of trust of my professional association. 
Now, in 2015, I was attacked by a Facebook bully, a person that I had never met before. Boo! <laughs> uh, a person that I'd never met before who decided that uh, she didn't like the fact that I had anti-Tony Abbott views. So <clears throat> she was very, very right-wing. And as you can see here, this is the comment that she made on my Facebook page, Banish Bullying at Work. A Facebook bully shouldn't hold, um, shouldn't hold a license to practice. And I got a creepy feeling when I read that, but I thought, well, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, people are allowed to have their own opinion, whatever. Uh, however, and as you can see, there are most, most of these reviews are one star. So she's made a habit of attacking small businesses, accusing them of various things. Uh, this one here is an exception, the Eagle's Nest Bar and Grill. I don't know if you remember that being in the news. It's a cafe in the outbacks of Queensland somewhere who gained notoriety for having a sign outside of their premises saying Muslims not allowed. Right? Five stars. I could give you, if I could give you ten stars, I would. So this is the sort of person that we're dealing with. So, on the 8th of January, she made a complaint uh, about my fitness to practice as a psychologist to APRA. Um, she said that I was practicing beyond, beyond my scope of competence because I was running a workshop with a little bit of an unusual title. And she thought, aha, this is the chance to pounce. So, pounce she did. I was also, there was also an implication that I was defrauding Medicare because I was offering Medicare rebates for this workshop that my clients were uh, doing. Now, on the 4th of March, so um, almost three months later, APRA phones me and says, we have received a complaint about your professional conduct. And as I'm sure many of you in this room have had similar experiences, is freaking terrifying. I was given 36 hours to respond. So the next day I spent, I blocked out my entire day and I focused on writing the best damn letter I could. And when I received the letter, they didn't tell me, by the way, who this person was, but I recognised it from the documents they sent me. I'd added two and two together. And... Um, so I drafted my response, which I thought was pretty good, and I even managed to get letters of endorsement from seven people, seven patient uh, clients of mine, including those who had um, either been in the workshop or taught with me at the workshop. I then submitted it on the 6th of March at 8 a.m., which was the response deadline. They looked at all of that, and then on the 19th of March, they decided that they were going to investigate me. And I couldn't believe it. I had furnished them with all of the evidence that I thought was necessary to demonstrate that this person making a complaint, I had no idea who she was, that she was just targeting me because that's what she did. So I had to lawyer up. I, got my, um, I invoked my professional indemnity insurance and I got my lawyers. And they gave me until the 10th of April to draft um, the response to the notification, which I did. And uh, the lawyers basically said what I had told them, but in legalese. So it has more weight for some reason. Then on May the 2nd, they, um, there was a second complaint about my website. I couldn't believe it. I was terrified. Because up until this point, I had no idea of this whole rat's nest that I've discovered since that we've, you've all talked about earlier today. No idea. And to give you an indication of the kinds of things they, they accused me of doing that was not following the guidelines, <clears throat> I had written on my website... You will need to bring a mental health care plan referral from your GP who will give you an initial six sessions after which you need a re-referral from your GP for a total of ten sessions. 
they, they objected to that. And they said, and I quote, it may be misleading because it could be read as suggesting that a patient will require 10 sessions when the purpose of a re-referral is for an assessment of whether a patient requires further sessions, entitlement to 10 sessions does not necessarily mean that the patient will require all 10 sessions. Right, so I, I rewrote my statement and I said, you will need to bring a mental health care plan referral from your GP who will give you an initial six sessions, after which you need a re-referral from your GP if you require a further four sessions, which you may not. It will be up to the discretion of your referring GP to decide how many sessions you require. Right? I'm dangerous. Dangerous psychologist. Right. So, having completed all of their um, requirements, six months later, which was harrowing and stressful because I could see my career head straight down the toilet, the compa complaint was closed and there were nil findings. Beggar's belief. So, um, why I think that opera are more dangerous than a homicidal client, I've had clients who have stood over me, shouted in my face, I've had a uh, client threaten to kill my dog, and uh, m men on methamphetamine, raging, angry, I can talk those guys down, because I've been trained to do that. And I have a very systematic procedure that I follow in order to do that. I set boundaries right at the outset, I explain what behaviour is acceptable and what is not acceptable. When the behaviour occurs, I say, you know, um, this is not okay. And I, I stay calm and I say, look, um, I, I don't think I'll be able to treat you anymore. I'm sorry, but I'll have to refer you on. I follow that on with a letter. I send them a letter reiterating my boundaries and then I write a letter to their GP. APRA, on the other hand, has threats early on that set the tone. They have ambiguous and irrational guidelines. And they are not allowed to advise you if you have, you know, you've made an attempt in, in good faith to write what they want you to write. They're not allowed to advise you if you've got it right or not. You have to submit it to them first, and then they get back to you, and they decide, so they ping pong backwards and forwards. They have a guilty until proven innocent approach. They are uh, <coughs> debatable, but they, their intention is to protect the public, but in so doing, they demonize us. They operate under a shroud of secrecy. There are no penalties for vexatious complaints, and they destroy careers with impunity. So some of the important questions I asked myself were, has our money been well spent? Why am I spending a good deal of registration fee every year to be registered by a bunch of bullies who are going to come after me and who are going to deregister me at the earliest opportunity? Is that money well spent? Why should I be colluding with a bullying organisation? And has the public been satisfactorily protected from a dangerous psychologist? So that little excerpt that I read to you, how petty is that? Meanwhile, there are kids dying and, and, and you know, on waiting lists for operations for four years, and that's what they come up with. What's the difference? Anyway, who are these people? These people who were charged to investigate me, to look up my website and, and nitpick words, who, who are they? How, how is it that they are able to completely destroy the career of a, a professional who's been working in the field for 16 years or more, and not to mention all the education that's gone behind it as well? Um, are they recent graduates? What qualifies them to investigate us? What investigative um, training have they had? And what are their key performance indicators? Like, do they have a system where the more the practitioners that get struck off, the better your pay grade is, you know, or, or, or the, you get promoted or something? I don't know. 
And uh, what rewards are linked to these key performance indicators? Now, I think we, these, whoever these people are, they need some empathy training. They need to understand that patients are, are human just like practitioners are human. And we needed to be treated with respect. We need to wrap uh, up now. Yep. Uh, just very quickly. We need a code of conduct that rec recognises equal practitioner and public patient rights, um, that recognises the impact of vexatious complaints, that penalises these complaints with fines or something, and we need an investigation into how the complaints, the process is used to bully people, and to set up an independent body to audit APRA to make them accountable. Uh, now, if you want to read the full report, it's here, and I encourage you to join me on Facebook on my Banish Bullying at Work page, because I'm always publishing stories about this area and other workplace bullying stories, and you can read the full account here, uh, http colon slash slash bit dot ly slash opera um, slash, uh, sorry, um, dash is dash dangerous. Thank you.